I want to talk about the use of voodoo art themes and language in connection with the Lovecraftian mythos. These are two very totemic elemental paintings of Lovecraftian voodoo gods. You will notice they, they are amphibious. I didn't paint a nose. They breathe through the sides, through the gills. They're gill people. This whole idea is, is very important because it brings all of the mystic and magic of voodoo into the world of New England, Lovecraftian, Innsmouthian, Dagonian, all the values that Lovecraft wove into the symbolism of his stories set along the coast and in the woods of Massachusetts. I think it's important for us to realize <coughs> that everywhere there are voodoo spirits and voodoo principles according to basic Haitian occultism, but this is true also in the many mythologies and cosmographies of voodoo when it's placed in the context of neo-paganism. So if we look at the New England coast and New England woods as depicted by H.P. Lovecraft, we realize that the energies that he represents the principles that he represents there can be identified with spirits found in the Haitian countryside or better at the crossroads in the country pathway in the middle of the night. It is important to see this idea that everywhere there is the same power of enchantment. People in New England, people in Haiti, will be talking about these deities in a certain way. They're talking about the same beings that are found everywhere and in every system of mythology. But the important point is not just to talk, but to enter into dialogue mentally with these spirits. This is the basis of all the channeling all of the spiritual mediumship, all of the different ways in which mystical experiences are transformed and transmitted throughout all the histories of religion worldwide. It's a very important factor in understanding human nature worldwide. It's the basis actually of the sameness of humanity wherever it might be. But here the lesson is these are not just human beings, these are humanoid. A connection to the elemental kingdom, to the kingdom of amphibious beings from the sea, the powerful water gods, the water spirits, have infused themselves into the human genetic pathway and created what is a wonderful and powerful magical race, the humanoids of Innsmouth, the Dagonian beings whose energy in a sense improves upon human limitation by taking away limitations of non-cooperation and anger and various other what we would call fault lines in human character and replacing them with the cooperation of spiritual beings that are fed by the oneness of the water, the mystical continuum of the water, the mystical ocean of the water, the mystical vastness of the water. This is one of the most important of all our principles and from our perspective it is a principle that guides the creation of adventures involving humans and humanoids interacting 
in all the Lovecraftian mysteries and in the great work that has been, shall we say, revealed through his writing, the Necronomicon mythos or physics. I'm not talking about specific embodiments. These are all parts of the energy. We capture the energy of the Necronomicon physics in this book or in this book or in this book. They're all powerful because they operate on the basis of that energy. But what is more important is the fact that there is this essential broadcasting of this spiritual psychic energy into our own minds. And the more we expose ourselves to it, the more we take on the characteristics of the humanoids and their sense of working together, their sense of cooperation, their intuitive being and consciousness where we all see things in terms of perfection, not in terms of selfishness and human limitation. That's why these deities, these principles, should be placed in various chambers of meditation and used to help individuals transform themselves from being selfish, self-centered, negative beings into being channels for this universal principle of harmony, the brotherhood of mankind. Thank you.